if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Well, you think you know someone. We make assumptions about others, and they make assumptions about us, and we wind up missing each other and connecting with one another. I think maybe I need to focus more, maybe you do also, on the reality of who I am and what I am, as well as the reality of who others are, so that we may actually connect in relationship in reality. Because if there's going to be that kind of a connection, it has to be based on the truth. The same is not only for you and for me, the same also goes for your relationship with God. And so today, we're gathered here to celebrate and to bask in the glory of who God is, the God we know and the God we experience in Jesus Christ. Friends, if you want, if you're looking for a connection, a relationship with the real God, for real people, then it has to really be based on the truth. Let's do that now, today, as we gather to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, and yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illuminates the whole world. We pray that you would transform us into the likeness of the love of Christ, who renewed our humanity so that we might be partakers of his divinity, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and with you, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, now as we continue our time of worship, as we begin this time of celebrating all that we know, all that we experience in Jesus Christ, let us now make our confession of faith by reciting together the Apostles' Creed. Now, as we do so, we don't just say and make uh, abstract propositions that we give intellectual assent to. In fact, at the center of this creed, both literally and figuratively, is a story. The story of a God who wants to be with us, who engages us. The God who engages us in our stories so that we might be then drawn up into His story. And so friends, now let's make our confession, our proclamation of faith as we say together, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, friends, now let us revel and let us bask in the glory that is we know and we experience in Jesus Christ as we sing together. And I, I know if you're maybe you've been doing this with us online for quite some time, but also maybe uh, also if it's your very first time or you're new with us, it may seem strange that we ask you to participate along and not just watch and observe. But we're here together, drawn together by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ to worship. And we can do that together. And so I ask you, even though it may seem strange, sing out loud. God will be pleased and your dog or your cat won't care a bit. So let's sing together as we praise Christ. Come people of the risen King who delight 
mercy bring him praise Come all and tune your hearts to sing To the morning star of grace From the shifting shadows of the earth We will lift our eyes to him Where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in Rejoice, rejoice Let every tongue rejoice One heart, one voice O Church of Christ, rejoice Come those whose joy is more Sun, and those weeping through the night Come those who tell our battles won And those struggling in the fight For His perfect love will never change And His mercies never cease But follow us through the certain hope of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. God, uh, our concerns and our praises, and, and also as we do so, we're going to be praying together. I'll offer uh, sections of prayer, and then as we'll see on the screen, I'll offer the words, we pray to the Lord, and then all of us together, say at home, is wherever you are, around whatever part of the Fall Branch and I met at this church table you're sitting around today, say the words in bold, Lord, hear our prayer. So let's pray together. God of majesty and power, who spoke and this world was, who breathed and this world lived, who counts the hairs upon our heads, who sees our thoughts and reads our hearts, who loves us more than we deserve. How can we not, Father, today bring our sacrifice of praise? For in your Son, Jesus Christ, lies the promise of relationship with the Savior who would die even for me, even for us for a life of truth and meaning and the promise of an eternity in which to praise you more every day. God of promise, we praise your name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's word, We pray for God's word to spread, to take deep roots into people's lives, beginning with us. 
and for we, your people, to be transformed into true servants, fit for your kingdom. Father, may we be guided by your Spirit to love and serve others as we have and continue to be loved by you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we thank you for the many gifts you've poured into our lives, for those who love us and nurture us, for those who teach us to be loving people. Bless these people and bless the gifts they pour into our lives that we may in turn bless others in your name, bringing healing and hope to a fractured and broken world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the healing of the sick and injured, for those who mourn this day, for those who find themselves in need. Father in heaven, come in power to bring healing, comfort, and provision. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, for your people, the church, in this time of uncertainty, in this time of quite often of fear, may we be a light and a beacon pointing to you, who is our rock. To those reaching out desperate hands, may we be known as a people of open hands, always reaching out to lift others onto the same sure footing on which we stand, Jesus, our foundation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we, your children, never pray alone, but only with all your saints in all the world. Therefore, we pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Amen. You know, there's so many times and ways that I have, and, and I continue to try to, well, domesticate. I try to tame and water down Jesus to fit my own taste, my own preferences, and my own will and desires. I, I want to make Jesus a party to my politics. I, I, I want to assume, and I just assume, he validates my my every decision, and that he condescends to, if not outright, enables all of my attitudes, even the ugly ones. Because, I mean, after all, Jesus is loving. He is, he's kind. He's, he's forgiving. Probably just to me, though. Because, well, he's, he's understanding that way. He's, he's more than understanding about why I am the way I am and why I'm more than willing to probably just let some people go. I mean, after all, Jesus was fully human, just like me. But probably just me, not, not you, of course, right? You know, when I, when I might feel the slightest bit of confrontation and pushback from Jesus, it, it's so easy for me to say, but it's only Jesus. It's just Jesus. Jesus, the God-man the anointed one of God, Christ Jesus, fully God and fully man as the creed describes him, the image or the, the icon of the invisible God in whom all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, as Paul paints the portrait in his letter to the Colossians, but only Jesus, indeed. You know, today in the passage of Scripture we're looking at in the Gospel of Mark, right before the one that we are looking at, we're we have a reminder again that Jesus was not constrained by any of our just onlys when it came to him. And in fact, he goes and he has this time where he, in the passage before we're going to be looking at today, he is talking to his disciples. He'd been healing, he'd been teaching with authority, he had been casting out demons, and they calling him, and he calls himself the Son of Man, this reference to the Messiah, the Anointed One of God, and word was getting out about him. He was becoming famous, 
There was a groundswell of support, and more and more people were beginning to follow him. And then he tells them, oh, and by the way, the Son of Man, the Messiah, that's me, he says, I'm going to be handed over by the scribes and the other religious leaders, and I'm going to be killed. And But on the third day, I'll rise from the dead. And then Peter, who thinks he's got a good beat on everything, takes Jesus aside and he rebukes Jesus for such foolish notions about who he is. Peter thought he had an understanding. And Jesus responds to him, you need to get behind me where you belong, following me, not trying to get ahead of me, Satan, adversary. They really didn't have a full picture of who Jesus was. And, and then we come to, in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9, it says this, Six days later, six days after Jesus is telling them about the fact that He's going to die. He, the Son of Man, the Messiah, the only one of God, is going to die. Six days later, Jesus took with Him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Well, then Peter said to Jesus, <clears throat> uh, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud came over them and overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved One. Listen to Him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he, that's Jesus, ordered them not to tell anyone what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. He changed in front of them, it says. Transfigured is the word that we've become used to reading there. I mean, it sounds more holy to say it that way, transfigured. It sounds more theological than to simply say, he changed. The word here is metamorphothe. It's where we get the word metamorphosis from. Or, simply put, changed. So what happened on that mountain six days after a conversation about suffering and death? Something. It's hard to say except by repeating the words that we read here already. He was transfigured. He was changed before them. See, what they were used to seeing, they no longer saw. And, and also something they had never seen before suddenly became evident before their fearful, frightened eyes. But what did they see? Well, something just short of indescribable. Now, luckily, there were some, well, if you might put it this way, audio-visual aids to their scene all around them to help them define and figure out what was happening right in front of them. Well, first of all, there were these other guys. Mark says it was Mo uh, Moses and Elijah, but how did they know who they were? I mean, were they wearing name tags? Was there a prompter walking around with signs? Or, or was it maybe one of those they-just-knew kind of things? M maybe Moses had his famous staff, the one that he parted the Red Sea with, and that he struck the rock and water came out in the desert to quench the thirst of God's people. And maybe Elijah had his wilderness garb on to kind of put him in the John the Baptist kind of mode that showed him to be a man of the desert, not really comfortable being around other people. Maybe it was a wild look in his eyes. Or, or maybe Jesus called them by name as he talked with them. We don't know because there's not a whole lot of mention and a whole lot of attention paid to these two. See, they, really, were props. They were the scenery for the lead actor. They were in supporting roles this day. It wasn't about them. 
See, they represented Moses and Elijah. They represented the law and the prophets, the story of the people of God, the heights of the chosen people. But they were there to draw attention to the one who was the word of God, who was the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us. Then there was the voice. The only word spoken on that mountaintop. Well, other than the rather unfortunate mumblings of that desperate disciple who just always seems to have to say something. And that something was about as appropriate as a giggle fit at a funeral. At at a belch in the middle of a silent prayer. He's the guy who's shouting, you the man, as the pro golfer is trying to make the clutch putt to win the Masters. He's the guy loudly throwing out spoilers in the darkened movie theater. I mean, even Mark tries to shut him up by saying he didn't know what he was saying or what to say. Now, now the words that we really are supposed to pay attention to are similar to a previous utterance. See, a few chapters earlier, if you remember, there were the words, You are my son, the beloved, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. And now the words say, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Now, the first words were directed to the one being baptized, the one launching his ministry and bringing about fulfillment and and hope to a desperate people. And the mountaintop words are to those who would seek to follow that one. To them, the terrified mumblers. And, And to us, the followers at some distance. Listen to him, to the beloved son. Listen to the changed one, the revealed one. Pay attention. Well, you've got to ask yourself, pay attention to what? <clears throat> to, to the change, to the glow, the fireworks, the power, and the glory? Well, yes and no. I mean, think about it. What's the context in which we usually use a word like metamorphosis? I, I remember being in high school biology class and talking about butterflies. The process of changing from a rather ugly like caterpillar into this fragile but breathtakingly beautiful butterfly. That's metamorphosis. It's change. Or, or maybe I remember it being in earth science and we were talking about metamorphic rocks. I mean, melted by the heat of the earth's core, the rock flows from one form into another. But here's the question. Which is the true form of the rock or the creature? Or is the before and the after both part of the greater whole? Is it a matter of perspective and a matter of timing? I think that what happened on that mountain was not so much a change into something different, but a revealing of the essence of the one who was changed. Jesus became who he was on that mountain, even though he was who he was as he climbed up and down that mountain as well. See, Jesus is always who he is. He is always present in the fullness of his being. We can see only part of him, the part that we really seem to need at any given moment. We experience only a piece of it, a dimension of a fuller reality that is the Christ. And we get used to that. It becomes, well, familiar to us. But every now and again, we catch a glimpse of something larger, something deeper and more profound. Every now and then, we hear a word that reverberates in our hearts and our souls for weeks, if not for a lifetime. Every now and then, a tear comes to our eyes as we realize we are standing on the precipice of glory. Every now and then, a lump comes into our throat as we encounter the depth, the true unfathomable depth of love and sacrifice. Every now and then, we climb a mountain and see what it is that we're following in what is most often the darkness of this world. Every now and then, we move a little closer, we grow a little taller, and even listen 
a little better. See, it's then that we can realize who and what we are. Even as we grow and change on the discipleship path, we can realize that who and what we are is possible because of Him. Only Jesus. In the end, it is only Jesus. The source of the strength and the focus of our attention is only Jesus. Now to be sure, this doesn't mean that we don't care if we're followers of Him, that we don't care about all that surrounds us. In fact, if anything, we're even more eager to be at work in the world, bringing hope and healing, bringing justice and freedom, but it is not for our own benefit that we do so. We work in the world only for Jesus. So let our worship in this time and in all times be that which lifts up the name of Jesus. Through our work and our service, through our passion and our commitment, through our songs and our prayers, through our compassion and our caring, let us listen to, let us follow, let us worship only Jesus. Well, friends, now we have the opportunity to share in a time of Holy Communion. If you have bread prepared and wine or grape juice, it's now place it before you and we will prepare to consecrate together through the great thanksgiving. Things are always with Jesus exactly what they seem, but always more than. And so in this simple bread, in this simple cup, we receive truly the grace of God. And in this simple bread and in this simple cup, it is so much more than that. In the giving and the receiving, we are in the presence of Christ and with one another. And so now, let's offer our invitation by saying together, Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. and We have not heard the cries of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. May the Lord be with us. We lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took bread, He gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to His disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union 
with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is with us. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on we who are gathered in your name. In this and all places your people gather in the union of worship this day. And on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in Your holy church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, now the invitation has been made and the table has been prepared. Share in the bread by taking a piece of, of bread with the words, the body of Christ given for us. And then take it and dip it into the cup with the words, the blood of Christ given for us. The body of Christ given for us. The body of Christ given for us. The body of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ given for us. The body of Christ given for us. Amen. The blood of Christ given for us. Amen. Friends, we have the opportunity now to continue our worship by giving of ourselves and who we are and out of what God's already blessed us with by making an offering to God through His church. And there are two ways that you can do that. First, you can mail your offering to Fall Branch and United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 86, Fall Branch, Tennessee, zip code 37656. Or if you prefer, you can make an offering online by going to holston.org forward slash church offering and choosing Appalachian District in the first pull down menu and then Fall Branch United Methodist Church in Fall Branch, Tennessee in the second pull down menu. And from there you may go with your debit or credit card to designate the amount that you want to make as an offering today. So friends, now let's pray and thank God for our offering at this time. Lord Jesus, all that we have is yours and all that we are is yours. In offering these tokens of our lives, may all that we do serve you to the glory of God. Amen. Well, friends, before we finish our time of worship today, just a couple of announcements that I, I'd like to make. The first is, this Sunday, or excuse me, this Wednesday, the 17th, is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season. And although we are not meeting together in person, we are having a special time that's maybe going to be a little bit different, but hopefully just as meaningful online. Here to Facebook Live, Wednesday, the 17th at 6.30 p.m. So look for that invitation on our Facebook page and join us if you would, please. I think it's going to be a good time as we begin this time of the season of reflection and the season of turning our lives around as we turn toward Christ and prepare ourselves for the Holy Week and Easter. And also something I know that many people in our area are perhaps most excited about or most anticipating is the second, the second uh, announcement, which is that we will be resuming in-person worship in the Fall Branch United Methodist Church in Fall Branch at our church sanctuary on Sunday, March the 7th at 11 a.m. So if you're in the Fall Branch area, we would love to have you join us in person 
We'll be taking safety precautions and wearing masks and social distancing, but we're so glad we have the opportunity to be back together in person, face to face again. We will also continue to have our online gatherings on Sundays at 11 as well. And so whether you're with us online or with, able to be with us in person, we hope you will continue to gather with God's people, the people known as Fall Branch United Methodist Church. And so now, friends, let's have our benediction as we close our time of gather worship today. May God shine the light of glory into your hearts. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Holy Spirit renew the image of God with which you are created. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, all God's people say, Amen. Amen.